In the year 3097, humanity had stretched its fingers into the cosmos, gently caressing the fabric of the galaxy with colonies and outposts, seeking knowledge, resources, and, above all, a new beginning. Among these beacons of civilization was Viridian III, a lush, verdant world on the outskirts of the Galactic Empire's reach. It was here, amidst the sprawling forests and beneath the watchful gaze of distant stars, that humanity's simmering defiance would be ignited by a single spark. Kai, a child of no more than ten summers, lived at the edge of one of Viridian III's burgeoning settlements. To Kai, the galaxy was a canvas of wonder, each day a new adventure. It was on one such day, while wandering beyond the safety of the settlement's perimeter, that Kai stumbled upon an anomaly buried beneath the emerald leaves, a relic of a time long forgotten, its origins shrouded in mystery and its purpose unknown. The artifact, a crystalline orb pulsating with an ethereal glow, seemed to beckon Kai closer. With a mixture of reverence and curiosity, Kai reached out, fingers brushing against its smooth surface. The moment contact was made, the orb erupted in a blaze of light, etching a signal into the heavens, a beacon that pierced the void of space, calling out to the unknown. Word of Kai's discovery spread quickly, a murmur of excitement threading its way through the settlement. However, this wonder was not to remain untainted. The Galactic Empire, a colossus of power and order, viewed the activation of the relic as a transgression of their sacrosanct laws, an affront to their dominion over the stars. The response was swift and merciless. An envoy of the Empire arrived at Viridian III, their ships casting long shadows over the settlement. They demanded the immediate surrender of the artifact and the child who had awoken it. The settlers, bound by fear and awe of the Empire's might, could only watch in silent despair as the envoy approached Kai. The encounter was brief. Words were exchanged, pleas met with cold indifference. And then, in a moment that would forever be etched into the heart of humanity, the envoy, deeming the child's actions as an unforgivable defiance, struck Kai down. The news of Kai's death, a child killed for a mere touch of curiosity, spread like wildfire across human territories. Screens in every home, outpost, and ship lit up with the tale of the Empire's cruelty. Grief united the disparate threads of humanity, weaving them into a tapestry of shared outrage and determination. From the depths of sorrow, a flame was kindled, a flame that would grow into a conflagration threatening to engulf the entire galaxy. Meetings were held in secret, plans were drawn in the shadows, and alliances forged in silence. Humanity's course was irrevocably altered, not just in pursuit of vengeance, but in the name of justice, freedom, and the right to seek out the wonders of the galaxy without fear. The tragedy at dawn on Viridian III became the catalyst for a revolution, a call to arms for all who dreamed of a galaxy unshackled from tyranny. Kai's death would not be in vain. It was the spark that would light the fire of rebellion, the beacon that would guide humanity in their fight to show the Galactic Empire hell itself. The aftershocks of Kai's death reverberated through the vastness of space, touching every human heart with a shared fury and an unspoken vow for retribution. Viridian III, once a symbol of humanity's hopeful expansion, had now become the cradle of its defiance. The Galactic Empire's act had not crushed spirits. Instead, it had forged an unbreakable will across countless worlds. In the days following the tragedy, a clandestine network of communication sprung to life its threads weaving through the fabric of human colonies. Leaders, scientists, and strategists began to gather in secret, their meetings bathed in the shadows of rebellion. The empire, in its arrogance, had underestimated the resolve of those it sought to dominate. The murder of a single human child had ignited a firestorm of unity among a species renowned for its perseverance. Dr. Lena Kovac, a brilliant engineer and tactician, emerged as one of the pivotal figures in these early days of resistance. Her lab on Mars had long been a hub for innovation, pushing the boundaries of what humanity believed possible. Now it served a new purpose, the heart of the rebellion's technological advancements. Under her guidance, ships were retrofitted with stealth technology, and new weapon systems were designed, ones that could potentially turn the tide against the Empire's formidable armada. But technology alone would not secure victory. 
Diplomacy played a crucial role in the burgeoning rebellion. Ambassador Jiro Tanaka, with his deep understanding of both human and alien cultures, sought to forge alliances with other species oppressed by the Empire. His journeys took him from the icy moons of Jupiter to the far reaches of the Outer Rim, each mission fraught with danger, but also with hope. The Galactic Empire's tyranny had sown seeds of discontent far and wide, and many were willing to stand with humanity against a common foe. As the movement grew, so did its audacity. A series of coordinated strikes on Empire supply depots marked the first open acts of defiance. These were not mere acts of sabotage, but declarations of war, carefully planned and executed to inflict maximum damage while avoiding civilian casualties. The message was clear. Humanity was no longer content to live in the shadows of oppression. Yet, with action came consequence. The Empire, vast and vicious, began to tighten its grip, deploying more ships to patrol human sectors and increasing surveillance on known rebel sympathizers. Each day brought new challenges, new dangers, but also new victories, no matter how small. With each successful operation, the rebellion's ranks swelled, drawing in those who had once stood by in silence, fearful of the Empire's wrath. Amidst this myelin of strategy and secrecy, a singular truth emerged. The flame of unity, sparked by the loss of an innocent child, had become a beacon of resistance. Humanity's disparate peoples, so often divided by distance and difference, now stood together as one. They shared a common goal, a common enemy, and a common cry for justice. The Galactic Empire had sought to extinguish a single spark, only to find itself facing a wildfire. In the hidden corners of the galaxy, plans were laid for the next phase of the rebellion. It would be a campaign unlike any other, harnessing the collective might, ingenuity, and spirit of a united humanity. The Empire had killed a human child, and in response, humanity was poised to show them hell. The stage was set for a galactic uprising that would reshape the cosmos forever. The rebellion against the Galactic Empire evolved rapidly from whispers of dissent into a thunderous symphony of action. With humanity's flame of unity burning brighter than ever, the next phase of resistance took form in the shadows. It was time for the architects of rebellion to deploy their most daring strategy yet, a series of covert operations aimed at destabilizing the Empire's hold on the galaxy. At the heart of this strategy were the shadow operatives, an elite cadre of soldiers, spies, and saboteurs drawn from the best humanity had to offer. These operatives were not just warriors. They were symbols of humanity's indomitable spirit, each with a personal score to settle with the Empire. Trained in the art of stealth, equipped with cutting-edge technology, and burning with a quiet rage, they were the ghosts in the Empire's machine. The first target was the Empire's communications hub on the moon of Thessia IV, a linchpin in their network of control across the sector. Breaching its defenses required a blend of precision and audacity that only the shadow operatives could offer. Led by Captain Ana Reyes, a tactician of unparalleled skill and a veteran of the border skirmishes, the team infiltrated the moon under the cover of a meteor shower. What followed was a ballet of shadows and silence, as they moved unseen through the facility, planting charges and slicing into data feeds. The explosion that finally tore through the communications hub was not just a blow to the Empire's infrastructure. It was a declaration that the shadows themselves had turned against them. News of the operation spread like wildfire, inspiring acts of resistance on other worlds and proving that the Empire was not invincible. Emboldened by the success of the Thessia IV operation, the Shadow operatives struck again and again, each mission bolder than the last. A fuel depot orbiting the gas giant of Helios was next, followed by a daring raid on an Empire armory located on a remote asteroid. Each victory chipped away at the Empire's resources and morale while bolstering that of the rebellion. But it wasn't just about inflicting material damage. The Shadow Operatives also embarked on missions of liberation, rescuing prisoners from Empire labor camps and extracting key figures willing to join the cause. Among them was Dr. Tariq Bashir, a brilliant scientist whose research into quantum entanglement had the potential to revolutionize space travel, giving the rebellion a much-needed edge. As the Shadow Operatives carried out their missions, a network of informants and sympathizers within the Empire began to take shape.
providing crucial intelligence and opening new avenues for sabotage. This underground resistance, working in concert with the operatives, created a web of defiance that stretched across the galaxy. Yet, with success came increased scrutiny. The Empire, enraged by the audacity of these attacks, doubled down on their efforts to crush the rebellion. New security measures were implemented, and the hunt for the shadow operatives intensified. The galaxy became a chessboard, with both sides maneuvering for advantage in a game where the stakes were nothing less than freedom itself. In this climate of heightened tension and danger, the operatives knew that each mission could be their last. But the fire kindled by Kai's death, now a blazing inferno, propelled them forward. They were the unseen hand of the rebellion, striking from the darkness to light the way toward liberation. The galaxy was watching, and the message was clear. From the deepest shadows, humanity would emerge to challenge the night. The rebellion's crescendo of covert victories orchestrated by the shadow operatives was only the prelude to a more audacious display of defiance. Humanity, united under the banner of retribution for Kai's death and the countless others wronged by the Galactic Empire, was ready to take the fight directly to the enemy. The stage was set for a confrontation that would send ripples across the cosmos, the Battle of Orion's Belt. Commander Sarah Jeng, a strategist whose brilliance was matched only by her courage, was chosen to lead this pivotal assault. Under her command, a fleet of human and allied ships, retrofitted with the latest technology developed by Dr. Lena Kovach and her team, prepared to strike at the Empire's military outpost nestled within the strategic choke point of Orion's belt. The outpost, a hub of military might and oppression, represented a significant obstacle to the rebellion's momentum. Its fall would not only be symbolic, but would also pave the way for further advances into the Empire's territory. As the rebel fleet emerged from hyperspace, the darkness of space was suddenly alight with the energy of charging weapons and defensive shields. The Empire, caught off guard but quick to respond, deployed its own formidable armada to counter the attack. What followed was a ballet of destruction and strategy, as both sides engaged in a dance of death among the stars. Commander Jung, understanding the stakes, had devised a plan that relied on precision rather than brute force. Small fighter squadrons, piloted by the best of the rebellion, wove through the enemy lines, targeting key systems and creating openings for the larger ships to exploit. Among these pilots was Captain Alex Wren, whose ship became the spearhead of a daring maneuver that would turn the tide of the battle. Wren, guided by intelligence gathered by the shadow operatives, identified the outpost's primary power source, a massive reactor core vulnerable to a precision strike. Escorting a squadron of bombers, Wren led the charge, dodging a hail of fire and debris. The resulting explosion did not just cripple the outpost, it sent a clear message to the Empire. Humanity would no longer be subjugated. The battle's aftermath was a testament to the rebellion's growing strength and the Empire's vulnerability. Debris and the remains of ships from both sides drifted through space, a somber reminder of the cost of freedom. But the victory at Orion's belt was more than a military success. It was a beacon of hope for oppressed peoples across the galaxy. The news of the rebellion's daring assault spread far and wide, inspiring others to rise up against their oppressors. In the wake of the battle, Commander Zheng addressed her weary but triumphant crew. Her words, broadcasted across the galaxy, spoke not of vengeance, but of justice, not of hatred, but of hope. The rebellion, she declared, was fighting for a future where no child would meet Kai's fate, where freedom was not just a dream, but a right. The Battle of Orion's Belt marked the first time the rebellion had drawn blood on such a scale. It was a declaration of war, not just against the Empire, but against the very notion of tyranny. As the rebel fleet returned to their hidden bases, repairing and mourning, they did so with the knowledge that the path ahead would be fraught with peril. Yet their resolve was unshaken, for they had shown the galaxy that when pushed to the brink, humanity would stand as one and fight back, turning despair into determination and tragedy into triumph. Following the stunning victory at Orion's belt, the Galactic Empire was forced to reckon with the reality of the rebellion's growing threat. The defeat, a blemish on the Empire's record of unchallenged dominion, could not go unanswered. 
From the opulent halls of the Imperial Palace to the cold, strategic depths of the War Council's chambers, the order was given. The rebellion must be crushed without mercy, a display of power that would quell any further dissent. Emperor Valerian, a ruler whose reign had been marked by both fear and awe, viewed the uprising as a personal affront. With cold fury, he unleashed the empire's might, initiating a campaign of retribution against human colonies. This was not just a military operation. It was a message, a statement of the lengths to which the empire would go to maintain control. Admiral Zara Kane, the empire's most feared tactician, was tasked with this dark endeavor. Her fleet, an armada of dreadnoughts and destroyers, descended upon unsuspecting human worlds with ruthless efficiency. The first to suffer was the colony of Elysium, a world known for its peaceful landscapes and scholarly inhabitants. The Empire's forces, under the cover of darkness, launched a devastating barrage, reducing centuries of civilization to rubble and ash. The massacre of Elysium was broadcast across the galaxy, a harrowing reminder of the cost of rebellion. The news of Elysium's fate sent shockwaves through the rebellion. Grief and rage fueled the determination to fight back, but also a sobering realization of the Empire's willingness to annihilate entire worlds to maintain its grip. The rebellion's leadership, faced with this new level of threat, understood that their strategy had to evolve. No longer could they rely solely on hit-and-run tactics and covert operations. They needed to protect their people and their worlds. In response, the rebellion fortified its positions, transforming hidden bases into bastions of resistance and setting up shield generators to protect populated areas. The task was Herculean, requiring not just technical expertise, but also a massive coordination effort among various species and factions. Dr. Lena Kovac and her team worked tirelessly, innovating new defense systems and countermeasures against the Empire's weaponry. Amidst this dark chapter, stories of heroism and resilience emerged. On the colony of Nova Terra, citizens banded together to evacuate the vulnerable and defend their homes against an Empire onslaught. Led by a young commander named Eli Martinez, a native of Nova Terra, they mounted a defense that would become legendary, holding off Imperial forces long enough for the bulk of the population to escape. The rebellion's message, in the face of such overwhelming odds, was clear. They would not be broken, nor would they stand idly by as their worlds were threatened. Each attack by the Empire, each world lost, only served to strengthen their resolve. The fight for freedom was no longer just a battle. It was a war for the soul of the galaxy. As the dust settled on devastated worlds and the rebellion mourned its losses, the resolve to fight on burned brighter than ever. The Empire's wrath had intended to extinguish the flames of rebellion, but instead it had only fanned them, sparking a determination that would not be quenched until the galaxy was free from tyranny. The stage was set for a conflict that would define the future of all who lived under the stars. In the aftermath of the Empire's brutal assaults, the Rebellion's strategy evolved from defense to daring. Central to this shift was the mission that would come to be known as the Starlight Raid, a pivotal operation aimed at not just striking back at the Empire, but also securing a future for the Rebellion. The target was the Empire's Arcadia Station, a fortress-like depot orbiting the gas giant Helios Prime. It housed a prototype starship engine capable of near-instantaneous travel across vast distances, a technology that could turn the tide of the war if it fell into rebel hands. The operation was spearheaded by Commander Luna Vasquez, a tactical genius who had risen through the ranks of the Rebellion with a mix of fearless leadership and unparalleled piloting skills. Vasquez and her elite team of pilots, engineers, and soldiers embarked on their mission aboard the stealth corvette Phantom. The plan was audacious, infiltrate the heavily guarded station, secure the prototype engine, and escape before the Empire could mount a counterattack. Success hinged on precision and timing, with no margin for error. As the Phantom slipped through the Empire's blockade, disguised as a commercial freighter, the tension among Vasquez's team was palpable. Their approach went undetected, and they docked at Arcadia Station under the guise of delivering supplies. What followed was a masterclass in stealth and subterfuge. The team disabled security systems, neutralized patrols with non-lethal force, 
and made their way to the heart of the station where the prototype engine was held. The heist was going according to plan until an unexpected complication arose. The engine was more massive and complex than intelligence had suggested, making it impossible to transport with their current equipment. Faced with the prospect of failure, Vasquez made a split-second decision that would define the mission's legacy. Rather than abandoning their objective, they chose to commandeer the entire station, rerouting its course and sending it hurtling through space towards a prearranged rendezvous point with the Rebellion fleet. The audacity of the operation caught the Empire off guard. By the time they realized what had happened, Arcadia Station was already light years away, under the protection of the Rebellion's armada. The successful heist of the station not only provided the Rebellion with a significant technological advantage, but also sent a clear message to the galaxy. The rebels were capable of outsmarting and outmaneuvering the Empire. The Starlight Raid became a symbol of hope and defiance, a testament to what could be achieved when the brightest minds and bravest souls among the rebellion worked together. Commander Vasquez and her team were celebrated as heroes, their names etched into the annals of the rebellion's history. But the victory was not without its costs. The Empire, humiliated by the theft, retaliated with even greater ferocity, launching a series of punitive strikes against suspected rebel sympathizers. The war escalated further, pushing the galaxy into deeper turmoil. Yet amidst the chaos, the rebellion's resolve only strengthened. Armed with new technology and a renewed sense of purpose, they prepared for the next phase of their struggle, knowing that each victory brought them one step closer to freeing the galaxy from the clutches of tyranny. The Starlight Raid was more than a mission. It was a beacon of what could be achieved when humanity stood united against oppression, a reminder that even in the darkest of times, there were stars that shone brightly, guiding the way toward freedom. The theft of Arcadia Station and its cutting-edge starship engine marked a turning point in the rebellion's fight against the Galactic Empire. The bold maneuver not only emboldened the rebel forces, but also showcased their growing strategic prowess and technological capability. As word of the operation spread, it ignited a wave of enthusiasm and support across the galaxy, drawing more systems and species to the cause. The rebellion was no longer a mere nuisance to the Empire, it had become a formidable opponent, challenging its dominion over the stars. Emboldened by their recent successes, the rebel leaders convened to plot the next phase of their campaign. Central to their strategy was leveraging the prototype engine's capabilities to launch rapid, unpredictable strikes across Empire-held territories, spreading their forces thin and undermining their control. Additionally, the Rebellion began to work on replicating the technology, envisioning a future where their fleet could traverse the galaxy with unprecedented speed, outmaneuvering the Empire at every turn. The first of these strikes targeted the Empire's supply lines, crippling their ability to maintain a prolonged offensive. Rebel fleets, now more mobile than ever, hit hard and vanished before significant Empire reinforcements could arrive. Each successful raid not only weakened the Empire's logistical capabilities, but also served as a beacon of hope for oppressed systems, encouraging them to rise up and join the rebellion. Among the species that joined the cause were the Avarians, a bird-like race renowned for their engineering prowess and strategic intellect. The Avarians, once neutral, had suffered under the Empire's exploitation and recognized in the rebellion a chance for liberation and justice. Their contribution to the rebel cause, both in terms of technology and combat expertise, proved invaluable, further tipping the scales in the rebellion's favor. The rebellion's momentum continued to build, leading to a series of skirmishes and battles that spanned the galaxy. Each confrontation, whether a victory or a setback, was a testament to the rebels' determination and resilience. Stories of heroism and sacrifice emerged from these battles, weaving into the fabric of the rebellion's growing legend. One such tale was that of Captain Mia Sato, who led a daring rescue mission to free prisoners from an Empire labor camp on the ice planet of Zephyr. Despite overwhelming odds and harsh conditions, Sato and her team succeeded in their mission, saving hundreds of lives and denying the Empire valuable labor resources. The operation exemplified the rebellion's commitment to fighting the Empire's tyranny, not just on the battlefield, but in saving those who had suffered the most under its rule.
As the rebellion expanded its operations, it also deepened its governance structures, establishing a provisional council to oversee the liberated territories. This council worked tirelessly to restore order, provide aid, and lay the foundations for a new galactic order based on freedom, justice, and cooperation among species. The vision of a galaxy free from the Empire's tyranny began to take shape, not just as a distant dream, but as a tangible reality that could be achieved through unity and perseverance. However, the Empire, though reeling from the rebellion's blows, was far from defeated. Emperor Valerian, enraged by the audacity of the rebel advances, prepared to unleash a counteroffensive that would dwarf all previous efforts to quell the uprising. The rebellion had proven itself a formidable force, but the coming storm promised to test their resolve as never before. As the tides of war shifted in favor of the rebellion, it became clear that the final confrontation was on the horizon. The galaxy stood at a crossroads, with the outcome of this conflict poised to shape its future for generations to come. The rebellion, once a disparate collection of dissidents, had grown into a beacon of hope for all who yearned for freedom. The stage was set for an epic struggle that would determine the fate of the galaxy. The rebellion, now a galvanizing force of unity and defiance, had pushed the galactic empire to the brink. Yet the darkest hour was upon them as Emperor Valerian, in a bid to reclaim his faltering grip on the galaxy, initiated Operation Nightfall a ruthless campaign aimed at eradicating the rebellion once and for all. The heart of this darkness was not merely the military onslaught that ensued, but the sinister strategy that targeted the very spirit of the rebellion. As the shadows of Operation Nightfall loomed, the rebellion faced its gravest challenge yet. The Empire unleashed a series of devastating attacks on key rebel strongholds, employing advanced war machines and legions of elite troops. The skies of freedom-bound worlds turned to firestorms as the Empire's wrath sought to burn the hope of rebellion to ashes. In the midst of this chaos, the Rebel Council received intelligence about a secret Imperial weapon, codenamed Eclipse, capable of annihilating entire planets. The revelation came from an unlikely source, a high-ranking Imperial defector, General Aaron Voss, whose conscience could no longer bear the Empire's atrocities. The Eclipse, stationed in the heart of the Empire's domain, represented an existential threat not only to the rebellion, but to all life in the galaxy. The decision was made to launch a covert operation to neutralize the Eclipse, a mission that would infiltrate the deepest layers of Imperial security. Leading this perilous endeavor was Lieutenant Commander Zoe Quinn, whose expertise in espionage and sabotage had earned her the moniker The Phantom of the Rebellion. Quinn and her team, a diverse group of specialists from across the galaxy, embarked on their journey aboard the stealth vessel, Nightshade. Their path led them to the Nihilus Sector, a vast expanse of darkness that housed the Empire's most secretive and guarded facilities. Navigating through the Sector's hazards required not just skill, but the kind of daring that had come to define the Rebellion's finest. The Nightshade, living up to its name, slipped through Imperial defenses like a shadow, drawing ever closer to the heart of darkness. Upon infiltrating the facility housing the Eclipse, Quinn and her team discovered the weapon's terrifying potential, capable of harnessing dark energy to create a singularity that could consume a planet whole. The stakes of their mission had never been clearer. Failure was not an option. The operation reached its climax as the team sabotaged the Eclipse's core, setting off a chain reaction that would ensure its destruction. Their escape, however, was anything but certain, as Imperial forces, alerted to their presence, closed in. What followed was a desperate race against time, with Quinn and her team fighting their way through waves of enemies to reach the Nightshade. As they made their final, daring leap to freedom, the Eclipse facility erupted in a cataclysmic explosion, a beacon of light in the heart of darkness. The mission's success sent shockwaves through the Empire, demonstrating the Rebellion's resolve to fight tyranny at any cost. The destruction of the Eclipse was more than a military victory. It was a symbol of the Rebellion's undying spirit, a blow to the Empire's perceived invincibility. But the cost was steep with sacrifices made at every turn, reminding all who fought for freedom of the price that must be paid.
As the rebellion mourned its losses and celebrated its triumph, the battle-scarred galaxy watched in awe. The Heart of Darkness operation had not just averted disaster, it had ignited a flame of hope brighter than ever before. The final confrontation with the Empire loomed on the horizon, but the rebels stood ready, united in their cause and unyielding in their courage. The darkness had been pushed back if only for a moment, and in its place shone the indomitable light of rebellion. With the destruction of the Eclipse, the rebellion's morale soared to unprecedented heights, casting a beacon of hope across the galaxy. This monumental victory, however, came at a grave cost, with many lives lost in the daring operation. The rebels, fueled by the sacrifices of their fallen comrades, prepared for what they knew would be the ultimate confrontation with the Galactic Empire. The stage was set for the final stand, a battle that would either free the galaxy from tyranny or see the rebellion crushed under the Empire's might. The Rebel Council, led by General Mara Kincaid, a veteran of countless skirmishes against the Empire, devised a plan that was as bold as it was dangerous. Understanding that a direct assault on the Imperial capital would be suicide, they instead opted for a strategy of attrition, targeting key Imperial strongholds to stretch their forces thin. The final objective was to isolate the capital and force Emperor Valerian into a position where he would have to face the rebellion head on. Across the galaxy, rebel fleets launched simultaneous attacks on Imperial outposts, engaging in fierce battles that tested the resolve and strength of every freedom fighter. Among these was Captain Raj Singh's daring assault on the fortress moon of Tyrannus, a victory that would go down in history as a turning point in the war. As the Empire scrambled to respond to these attacks, the main rebel fleet, a formidable assembly of ships from across the galaxy, made its way toward the Imperial capital. The journey was perilous, with the fleet having to navigate through heavily fortified sectors and withstand the onslaught of the Imperial Navy. Yet with every star system they liberated along the way, their numbers grew, as did their determination. The final battle for the capital was a spectacle of cosmic proportions, a clash of titans that raged across space and on the planet's surface. Rebel forces engaged the Imperial legions in ground combat, fighting tooth and nail to secure key positions. In orbit, the rebel fleet faced off against the Emperor's armada, their ships dancing a deadly ballet among the stars. At the heart of this chaos was a duel of fates between General Kincaid and Emperor Valerian himself. The two leaders, representing the ideals and sins of their respective sides, battled in the shadow of the capital's spires, a fight that would determine the outcome of the war. In the end, it was the courage of the rebellion that prevailed. With the emperor defeated and his forces in disarray, the capital fell to the rebels, signaling the collapse of the Galactic Empire. The victory was not just a military triumph, but a vindication of the rebellion's cause, a testament to the power of unity and the indomitable spirit of those who fight for freedom. The aftermath of the final stand was a galaxy in mourning, yet also in celebration. The cost of freedom had been high, but the legacy of those who had fought and sacrificed for it would live on forever. The Galactic Empire was no more, its reign of terror ended by the collective might of a rebellion that had dared to stand against the darkness. As the rebels gathered to declare their hard-won victory, they knew the path ahead would be fraught with challenges. The task of rebuilding the galaxy, of healing the wounds of war and oppression, would require time, patience, and cooperation. But on that day, as they looked toward a horizon free from tyranny, they did so with hope in their hearts. The final stand had not just liberated the galaxy, it had opened the door to a new era of peace and prosperity, a future forged in the fires of rebellion and born of the unwavering belief in a better tomorrow. The fall of the Galactic Empire, marked by the liberation of the capital and the defeat of Emperor Valerian, heralded the beginning of a new era for the galaxy. The victory, while joyous, left the rebellion with the monumental task of rebuilding a society torn apart by centuries of tyranny and war. It was a time for healing, for unity, and for the construction of a new galactic order founded on the principles of freedom, justice, and democracy. General Mara Kincaid, now recognized as one of the architects of the rebellion's triumph, 
assumed the role of interim leader of the newly formed Galactic Council. This council was a mosaic of representatives from every corner of the galaxy, embodying the diversity and unity that had powered the rebellion to victory. The council's first decree was the establishment of the Galactic Charter, a document enshrining the rights and freedoms of all beings and outlining the framework for a democratic government. The process of rebuilding was arduous, with the scars of the Empire's rule running deep. Entire worlds needed reconstruction, and the fabric of society required mending. Yet, the spirit of cooperation that had brought the rebellion to victory became the cornerstone of reconstruction. Technologies once used for war were repurposed for healing the galaxy, from terraforming devastated planets to healing the wounded. Among the most pressing challenges was addressing the remnants of the Empire. Not all had surrendered. Pockets of resistance persisted, clinging to the old ways of tyranny. The Galactic Council, determined to avoid the mistakes of the past, approached these remnants with an offer of amnesty and reconciliation. Many accepted, drawn by the promise of a galaxy where peace was possible. Those who chose conflict were met with swift justice, not out of vengeance, but to safeguard the fragile peace. The liberation of the galaxy also ignited a renaissance of culture and knowledge. Worlds that had been isolated under the Empire's rule now exchanged ideas and traditions freely. The Avarians, once secluded, became pioneers in the galaxy's new era of technological innovation. The stories of heroes from the Rebellion, such as Lieutenant Commander Zoe Quinn and Captain Raj Singh, were celebrated, their legacies inspiring a new generation to explore the stars. One of the most symbolic acts of the New Dawn was the establishment of the Memorial of the Fallen a tribute to those who had sacrificed their lives for freedom. Located on the once battle-scarred grounds of the capital, the memorial stood as a testament to the cost of peace and the enduring spirit of the rebellion. It was here that the galaxy came together to remember the past and dream of the future. As years passed, the galaxy flourished under the governance of the Galactic Council. Disputes were settled through diplomacy, and the specter of war faded into memory. The era of the Galactic Empire became a dark chapter in the galaxy's history, a reminder of what could happen when power was left unchecked. The story of the rebellion, from the tragic death of a child on a distant world to the epic struggle that freed the galaxy, was passed down through generations. It served as a beacon of hope, a reminder that even in the darkest of times, the light of freedom, unity, and courage could dispel the shadows. The New Dawn was not just a period of recovery and growth, but a celebration of the resilience and indomitable will of all who call the galaxy home. As the sun rose on a new day, it illuminated a galaxy united, peaceful, and brimming with the potential for greatness. The rebellion had shown them hell, but in the aftermath, they found their way back to the light, together forging a path toward a brighter future.